to Gionet became a legal association in 2008, four years after its creation as an FP6 network of excellence. At that time, we were uh, not many uh, research institutes uh, involved as members, but uh, later in 2013, with the membership expanded and the association now comprises 26 research institutes from 19 countries and this has been possible uh, thanks to the fact that we had the, C the FP7 project, the CGS Europe Coordination Action, which CO2 Gionet was uh, uh, coordinating and um, this project received last year the CSLF Global Achievement Award in recognition of its advancements of CSS technologies. So what is very important now is that CO2 Geonet is a pan-European scientific uh, body and as such uh, can um, enter into contract or sign agreements and what is uh, most important is that in 2013 CO2 Geonet applied as a research NGO at UNFCCC and now is an accredited uh, observer of the climate uh, change negotiations. Um, and this is well in line about the main uh, goals, objectives of CO2 Geonet, which is to uh, uh, develop joint research activities, but also to give scientific advice based on our research findings and organize training and do a lot of information and communication about uh, CO2 storage and CCS. That's why now the CO2 Geonet Association has an important role in the COPS events. And um, uh, the first COP event we attended was in uh, 2009 in Copenhagen. Uh, at that time, uh, we were not uh, accredited observer organization. We have been invited by the Bellona Foundation uh, at their booth to uh, inform about CO2 storage using our CO2 Geonet brochure, which is targeted for non-specialists to explain what CO2 storage means. And then in 2013, we, we were accredited by UNFCCC and then in COP19, CO2 Dionet did register and attended. Sergio Persoglia was there representing CO2 Dionet, and he had the opportunity to give CO2 Dionet views in three side events that are listed here, organized by other bodies. And in COP21, we have been uh, very, very active, leading the organization of several events, both side events and booths in the, in the restricted area of the negotiation zone, as we are uh, accredited observer organization, but also in the climate generation areas, which was next to the negotiation zone and open to the public, because for us it's very important to have a dialogue with both, you know, policy makers and official representatives of countries, but also with the civil society at large. So both actions are very important for, for us. Uh, before COP21, CO2 Geonet participated to the pre-COP scientific conference, Our Common Future Under Climate Change in, in Paris in July. And we organized together with the Mercator Research Institute uh, a parallel session on negative emissions for climate change, stabilization, and the role of CO2 geological storage. So there, for instance, bio CCS and uh, direct air capture with CCS was, was discussed. Um, and. Uh, in this scientific conference, there was a possibility to also organize side events in other countries, not necessarily in Paris, it could be in other countries in the world. And then we organized, co-organized four side events. So one in Italy, 
you know, all of them have a specific uh, topic. In Italy, it was a dialogue for developing synergies uh, between biomass, hydrogen, and CCS. In UK, it was about uh, what CO2 storage can bring to mitigating climate change. In France, it was a wider uh, discussion for sharing visions of a low carbon society, and CCS is one element to, to do that. And uh, in Italy, again, there was a, a side event on uh, yes, the potential of CO2 storage globally, but also uh, in Italy. And these scienti international scientific conferences ended with a joint press statement that we made with the uh, ERA Alliance, the Global CCS Institute, and IAGAG, where, uh, uh, saying that scientists cite CCS as a viable and flexible climate change mitigation technology, as it can be applied to uh, fossil fuel combustion, but also industry processes, and gives opportunity for negative emissions. Now, in COP21, uh, I will start with what happened in the restricted negotiation zone. Uh, first, uh, it was the first time that there was an official UNFCCC side event on CCS at this COP. And this is because there was a, a, a joint uh, effort of several organizations, the University of Texas, IAGAG, CCSA, and, and CO2 Geonet, and we have been able to uh, have this side event officially uh, in the program. And uh, it was to discuss the achievements so far on CCS globally and what are the opportunities for developing countries. And in particular, uh, Ton Vinelborg, our president, presented on uh, the the pilot projects in the EU and uh, what are the achievements so far on CO2 storage and the opportunities for developing countries. We had also an official uh, booth on CCS at, in the restricted area uh, to provide information on CCS, a climate change mitigation technology. And there were many visitors, including many from developing countries, from Africa and elsewhere, saying, oh yes, this can be an interesting mitigation technology. How can it work? In my, could it be applied in my country? So we are now seeing more and more interest as, uh, on CCS. In the negotiation zone, CO2 Gionet was also lead organizer for a side event in the EU pavilion on the role of CCS in mitigating climate change. So you can see, uh, for instance, the IEA Philippe Benoit gave a presentation, uh, including also Kerry Vincent, uh, who organized it. And uh, there was another event. We have been also invited to the Bellona side event on North Sea Basin CO2 storage opportunities. And again, uh, Kerry Vincent gave a, a presentation here for CO2 Geonet. Now, in the open access climate generation area. Yeah, there we, we had the first, we organized a side event in French this time because there was another side event in the restricted uh, area in English, but also because in this public area there were quite many French visitors as we, we were in Paris. And we had one uh, uh, that was organized by CO2 Geonet together with IEA, the Global CCS Institute, and the French club CO2. And the title was CCS, a proven and safe technology vital for completing the climate change mitigation portfolio. And CO2 Geonet presented on, on first explaining what CCS really means for non-specialists and how to make sure that CO2 will be stored safely deep underground, which is a, one of the key concerns of stakeholders. And in the public zone, we also had a booth in, again, co-organized co with uh, uh, different uh, bodies working on CCS. So here it is a quite large booth, and we had also rock samples to make some experiments and to show to visitors uh, 
how CO2 could be stored uh, in the underground, what are the mechanisms. All these events uh, during the 2015 years, uh, the, the key messages that we can uh, think uh, uh, retain for, 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 for CCS is that CCS is now recognized as a key technology to mitigate climate change. And uh, then it is now ready to be progressively deployed. Of course, there are some uh, uncertainties, but it's like any technologies. You have to uh, further learn by doing. Uh, so CCS can reduce emissions from fossil fuel combustion and industrial processes, but it's very important also to consider CCS and uh, CO2 storage for uh, capturing CO2 from that is already in the atmosphere through a uh, combination with um, biomass energy or direct air capture technologies. Now, to accelerate CCS deployment, what is really important is to multiply the real field uh, experience. We have uh, up to now 15 uh, large-scale uh, projects operating globally. Uh, we have uh, a few also small pilots, but it's, uh, if we want really to change scale so that CCS can significant, significantly contribute uh, to uh, reducing CO2 emission, then there is a scale chain needed. And for that, we have to, uh, to learn more and more uh, from a real field uh, experiences. What is also important is to start to establish strategic plans for CO2 storage development, where and how much CO2 can be stored with a high enough certainty so that we are also able to plan the transport infrastructure that will link the CO2 sources to the, to the uh, CO2 storage sites. Um, it is also important to develop a socio-economic incentive framework because up to now CCS is, uh, faces difficulties due to the lack of uh, business model and uh, also a lack of uh, awareness and support on a social level, both from, uh, I think, uh, policy makers, including at the regional level and, uh, and more uh, the general public. So there is work to do uh, along these lines. And it is also important to continue upstream research for developing, you know, the next generation technologies, more, uh, even more uh, efficient, even more uh, less expensive, real time, etc. And what emerged also during all the discussion we had with the, all these uh, stakeholders during uh, last year, you now some people argue that CCS is a way to continue uh, using fossil fuel. They, they don't like that at all. And uh, I think that the reverse wording is right. This, we cannot say that CCS is a way to continue using fossil fuels. What is important to say is that we, CCS is an available technology now. It ca can be applied. So we should, uh, uh, we should uh, no, uh, not continue to use fossil energy without using CCS. And it's a virtuous loop because uh, uh, when you extract fossil fuel, you extract fossil fuel and, uh, and uh, carbon from the underground. So if you think about uh, then the idea is to, if you, you, we continue to do that, that's good, but then let's put back the carbon into the underground and store the CO2. And now a few words about the, the Paris Climate Agreement. So what was a surprise in Paris? It was the, the ambition to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, so well below 2 degrees. And this was a surprise. Um, also, uh, what is interesting is that uh, it is uh, in, the, in the agreement, they, they speak about a balance between sources, a, a, between the emission 
emissions and, uh, and, and sinks. So it is a net zero emission uh, in the second half of this century. So they are not talking about uh, zero emission, but there is a possibility if we emit then to uh, remove the CO2 emitted. Also what is uh, important is that uh, uh, the nationally determined contributions uh, that uh, were already uh, uh, submitted in uh, 2015 will need to be revised every five years. And they need to recognize and implement mitigation actions with respect to anthropogenic emissions and removals. Uh, the article also say that there is a need to strengthen cooperative action on technology development and transfer for the implementation of mitigation and adaptation actions. And uh, uh, the capacity building and uh, the actions that developed countries should do in favor of developing countries to enable them to uh, implement mitigation action and, uh, and to enable them to develop technology and uh, deploy it. So this is also uh, very, very important. All this, I have only selected a few of uh, the key elements of the Paris Climate Agreement, but all these calls for uh, stronger efforts in CCS technology development, transfer and capacity building. The agreement doesn't quote any technology, it is technology neutral, but technology is for sure a key, uh, one of the key aspects of the agreement. And CCS is one of, the, one of the technologies to be further developed and deployed. So what next? This is my, my last line, what next? Concerning the nationally determined contributions, uh, up to now there are very few countries that have included CCS in their, in their, in their plans. On, on one hand, it's not so surprising because CCS is not very well known up to now and also this uh, contribution were focused on early actions up to 2025-2030 and CCS uh, will uh, probably become important only later. Uh, in this uh, 11 countries, there are some surprising omissions. Uh, that means that there are some uh, countries that are very uh, active in, uh, on research and uh, demonstration on CCS and they are not quoting CCS. And on the other hand, there are some countries that are not working on CCS but are quoting CCS in their, in their plans. So they are probably they are interested to, to, to learn more and to consider it and the potential of application in the country. So what is important is that there is a need to revise this, this, uh, this uh, contributions every five years and they need to be more and more, uh, more and more serious to, because up to now the pledges could account, could limit global warming to 2.7 degrees C, but if we want to go well below two degrees up to 1.5 degrees, then uh, uh, much more efforts need to be done. So there is po possibility probably here for more, uh, more consideration of CCS in, uh, in, in the future. Um, there is, as a result of the COP agreement, there is a new IPCC report on the 1.5 degree C ambition that uh, will be prepared for, for 2018. So here, uh, there is also an um, important role of CCS and uh, CCS should be further emphasized and uh, there is a possibility to write submission to IPCC and probably CO2 Geonet should, should consider uh, giving an input. Um, also, what was announced at the beginning of the COP21 by the President Obama and the French President Hollande was a global initiative, uh, Mission Innovation, to where uh, 20 countries 
are committing to double their clean energy research and development investment over five years. So here there is, uh, we have to, to investigate and uh, make sure that CCS is considered as, as other technologies. And uh, if this is the case, then uh, CO2 Geonet and other CCS stakeholders uh, should have a, a role to play here. Uh, at the EU level, in the Strategic Energy Technology Plan, CCS is one of the 10 key actions um, to be developed, and CO2 Geonet has just answered the EC consultation uh, uh, on the proposed targets by 2020 and uh, 2030, and CO2 Geonet will uh, still follow the, the, the process. And now the question is, for COP22, what could be done? What could be done during the COP22 in Morocco in December, but also before to prepare and to help uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the pro help progress for, on uh, mitigation action and on uh, CCS in particular? So for all this, uh, what should be done next, uh, I would uh, appreciate uh, during the discussion uh, session a bit later that you all comment and provide ideas, maybe some additional ideas about uh, what uh, should be done. Thank you for your attention.